YouTuber and indie musician Gabby Hanna has recently kicked off a new era in her storied career, proving that some stories don't really have an ending and are just like really angry chapter books written by the most outspoken person you knew in college. Like we know girl, apartheid was bad, why are you yelling at us about it? With the recent premiere of her music video for a cover of You Oughta Know by Alanis Morissette, Gabby shows us that she's evolved past yelling her raw, angsty lyrics into a microphone and onto yelling someone else's raw, angsty lyrics into a microphone. While this is definitely not one of Gabby's most well-received musical releases, it's also not technically her worst, with a professional sounding mix and a song that kind of plays to her vocal style. So then why the dismal dislike ratio on YouTube? Let's find out by comparing Gabby's version of You Oughta Know to the Alanis original, exploring why Gabby's version feels just a touch more hollow and overproduced, and how such a simple video can be crammed with so many Gabby Hanna trademarks, such as dusty looking interpretive dance, not enough stuff happening, and those very supportive looking high-heeled boots that I assume were chosen for the rattlesnake protection they offer in this harsh desert location. What are we watching today? You, you, you oughta know. With a Gabby Hanna installment of Clip Breakdown. <laughs> Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other content found on the web. And we smash it apart like a box of mementos from our ex-boyfriend so that we can look at each individual clip and decide, ooh, we oughta know that that's a good thing or we oughta know, no, 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 no. And today we're getting back into it with more Gabby Hanna. I've talked about her in a video where we covered a birth, a wide girth birth of her music videos. Just freestyling with words now. But today we're gonna focus in on just her singular latest release, You Oughta Know. One that I felt very compelled to listen to and dive into because yo, y'all. This song means a lot to me. Alanis Morissette, Jagged Little Pill, that whole CD really spoke to me in my teen years. I'm not gatekeeping Alanis by any means. It also spoke to Gabby as well. She says in the description of this video that it was one of her favorite karaoke songs. So let's see how she does with the professional take on it. But before we get into it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more clip breakdowns on YouTuber music videos just like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. So turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when we're serving up a smashed box of goods. So in case you haven't seen it, the original Alanis Morissette video starts with Alanis on a park bench in the Mojave Desert. She has a suitcase and they're using this blown out film stock and really jumpy cuts and even like a fisheye lens. All of that adding to the discomfort. In Gabby Hanna's version of the music video, most of the discomfort comes from this Ozzy Osbourne impression. And I'm happy for you. That's me intimidating whoever picks up the last bag of cookie dough bites at the grocery store. You better treasure what you've got before it gets snatched out of your hands in the parking lot a few minutes from now. I'm happy. Just like, I feel like I'm being approached by the witch from Into the Woods. Like I said, I do feel that this song, You Oughta Know, is a good cover song and it lends itself to other people's voices very easily. But one of the most memorable parts about the original is that Alanis Morissette's vocals feel so raw and it's very unique to like kind of her style of singing. So it doesn't sound good when someone's like trying to copy or do an Alanis Morissette impression, but it also doesn't sound good when someone like sings it too clean, you know? Let's see how Gabby does in between those two things. Does she speak eloquently? Gabby threw that hand up and said, oh shit, I forgot to make the sock puppet I was gonna perform this song with. Ugh, that was kind of gonna be the whole thing. I almost feel like Gabby kind of wanted to let herself off the hook with this song because it's a cover. She didn't think she needed to do anything for the video, much more than just performing it in this, you know, sandbox. I would argue that since it's a cover and she's claiming to do this in her own style and make it more of a rock song, there's even more opportunity for you to put visuals in it that distinguish this version from Alanis's. Because in Alanis's version right now, in the second verse of the song, she's walking through the desert. It looks so hot and uncomfortable. Like you see the heat waves, like it's a very visceral video. That's what I love about it. It's simple, much like this Gabby version, but it still has a story to it. In this middle part, she like takes it out of her suitcase, like a white tank top and a coat and like changes into white clothes. And it feels very much like she's like becoming a blank slate maybe, or starting fresh or becoming, you know, cause the first outfit Alanis was wearing was sort of like a black dress like she would have worn in her earlier pop career 
career because Jagged Little Pill, the album, was all about her changing her image. So I kind of assumed when Gabby was doing You Oughta Know that this was gonna be like the start of her changing her new image, not kind of more of the same. Because Alanis, she's like changing out of her old pop image in the desert, it seems like it's a big long journey. And then she starts fresh, she gets this blank slate canvas type of moment. Here's what we have going on in Gabby's version. <laughs> Why is this vocal arrangement picking up where Glee season six left off? That's like dragging a racehorse across the finish line after it's died of exhaustion. There's no one to give the prize money to. I had read that Alanis Morissette only recorded the demo vocals for this song in like 1994, and she recorded them in the booth as she was writing the lyrics with her producer that she worked on it with. His name was Glenn Ballard. They like recorded this demo track, and then over the course of the next year, other people started adding their tracks in like a bass and a drum. They had Dave Navarro as the guitarist and Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers as the bassist. I thought it was so interesting to learn how the song like kind of improved over the year. It didn't have like a super memorable bass line before they got in there. And there was talk of Alanis cleaning up her vocals or recording new vocal tracks at some point, but she was insistent that they kept it very like, no, this is how it was at the point of creation. We're leaving it. And it wasn't like crowded in with a bunch of background vocals. Meanwhile, Gabby was like, I was thinking something more like bum, 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 bum. Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. We want a tight barbershop quartet harmony all through the chorus, like it's a kid's bop recording. It almost sounds to me like Leah Michelle singing, especially at the end where she's like, the mask you left when you went away. When you went away. Like, I never have heard a version of it where that is such a pronounced melody there, but it's fine. I mean, there are plenty of people who do covers of this song. I just think this particular like harmony sounds kind of like Nickelback to me, where he's like, look at that photograph. Every time I, do, it makes me laugh. I didn't notice this on my own, but someone else pointed out that the drum line in Gabby's version of this song is very robotic and stilted, doesn't have a lot of natural sound. Tell me if you can hear that. Things look Okay, fingerography, now suddenly I'm not bored. That's the move people used to do to you if you said you had vision problems. How many fingers am I holding up? To which I say, we're way past fingers, Jessica. I can take the whole fist. Nope, sorry, got my wires crossed there. This is something that I've noticed in a lot of Gabby Hanna's videos is that she overestimates her ability to just kind of fill the scene with stage president, presidents. Stage presidents, the 50 presidents on stage. How many presidents have there been? I don't count Donald Trump. Things look peaceful. So she's like doing a lot of stuff that you're like, are you in middle school drama class getting warmed up for the play? Because it's like, well, this is all very fun ways to get connected with your body. But like when you put it in a video, does it mean anything or are you just around. Curious. And again, it's a simple concept. She's just in the desert, but I don't feel like she's put any thought into the costume or like how she's designing all of it. She shot two takes, one in the daylight and one at magic hour where the sun is setting. But like, there's nothing else. You could even use stock footage to liven this up and give me like visuals that show me what this song means to you, but I'm just not getting it. So that's a little disappointing. I do love that there are several points during the video where she does these little scampers where it's like, doo -doo -doo -doo, and she's running along. <laughs> March along, little drummer boy. We love to see it. She's like, I didn't get these boots to not pound them into this dust like it's the surface of the moon. That's one small step for mankind, one giant leap for these boots crushing the desert dirt. See, now we go into like the magic hour moment where it's nighttime and I'm just like, uh, right, like I get it. The sun sets, but what's the story? What does this song mean to you? And like I said, I just think she's letting herself off the hook by saying like, well, I'm not doing a video for like a story. It's just a simple performance of it. And it's like, all right, I mean, for my money, I'm not gonna put out something that is just a simple performance. You got this whole crew together. You got these five guys behind you pretending to play instruments. Like you paid for all of this. I would think you would want to take the time. Like don't, no one knows who you are. So you better be like artistically branding yourself with every little thing you put out. But that's just how I feel. But also, I mean, we could be telling more story with these guys behind her. Kind of just feels like she's like, these are my cool guy friends. We're all best friends, even though they're just like, guys and girls can be friends. Like, like, isn't this a feminist song? Why don't you have female musicians? But anyway, again, that could be not her interpretation of the song. I'm not telling her how to feel about it. Let's just see what else happens. I think we all could have predicted she was gonna get down on that dirt floor as soon as we saw her in white pants. Don't worry, everyone. Mama's got the magic of Clorox. Mama's got the magic of 
Clorox. After the bridge of the original song, which was like that, ooh, ooh, which I really love, the video showed Alanis coming to this lush field of beautiful flowers, and it looks so much more cool and comfortable and green. And then she puts on a blue silk top. To me, it kind of looks like it symbolizes her changing her images to come to a more artistically fertile ground. You know, like this is her, she changed from what she was. Now she's entering this jagged little pill kind of time period where she's being more authentic and leaving the bubblegum pop behind and becoming more of like the musician that we all know her to be today. Again, it's not doing anything far more complex than what Gabby is with hers, but it still is giving us a story with just three simple costume changes. Alanis, Alanis, why do I always, Canadian words, I'm always like Degrassi when I know it's Degrass, Degrassi, Degrassi, Degrassi. Alanis could tell you the story of what that video means because she worked with the director Nick Egan on it and I'm sure they had a concept and fleshed it out. Like I just don't feel like there's that level of artistic direction in Gabby's work here yet. So it just felt like a cover. It just felt like an imitation and didn't feel like you're reimagining it in any way. It just kind of felt like copying it with, you know, a visual of me performing it along with it. I think it would be more impressive to actually find a simple way to just in the desert tell this story like Alanis did with her costume changes. That's where you really make an impact for people. It's like something that's simple and effective. Let's see what else happens. I also somehow knew I would have sand thrown in my face at some point during this video. I always second guess myself when I think I need to wear safety goggles, or in this case, even a sleep mask would be good because snooze. That's my favorite part in the original where it's like the refrain where she's like, I'm here. Like she repeats it because it's like, no, I'm not done yet. I'm coming back for one more thing to say. To me, the vocals on Gabby's version sound a little too clean, except for these little areas where the song breaks with the background vocals. I don't know. That's where Gabby really pushes her vocals to break. She wants them to shatter and sound very cathartic. Kind of like Alanis never even really got to that point. It's kind of almost more like Sia would do, which again, I always see a lot of influence from Sia in at Gabby Hanna's movements and some of her vocals, but I don't know if she's ever cited that as an influence. Let's see if she gives us more of that raw feeling at the end. Give it to me raw Hanna, Gabby Hanna, Hanna Gabby Kana, Hanna Gab, Hanna comma Gabby. <laughs> Oh boy, I'm glad they had just about finished recording the song before Gabby turned into a werewolf there. I think we crossed the line from vocals that sounded cathartic to vocals that sounded like you just got a catheter. <laughs> a wordplay for the children. <laughs> I had food poisoning yesterday when I meant to shoot this video, so my body bounced back today and I'm like, oh, mirth and be merry, joyous and gay. I'm like the ghost of Christmas present. Anyway, what do you guys think of this Gabby Hanna You Oughta Know cover? To me, it's like, I don't think there's a big issue with doing a cover song. I just don't really understand why it was marketed in her social media as like a release of a song when it's kind of just like, oh, I did this like in the studio with my friends to like get warmed up for the sound that I'm doing next. Like that would be kind of cool, but if you put this this out as though it's supposed to be like an actual statement about your new sound. It feels cheap because she's put out so much original music already that honestly would be more interesting to review because it's not just kind of a copy or following the blueprint of a really well-known and heavily covered song. But hey, whatever, it's not my life, it's hers. And I'm just here to comment on it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to get your opinions. Also, let me know what else I should cover for music videos from YouTubers. In the comments below. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see more clip breakdowns like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right down here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. So turn on notifications and you'll always know when I'm here to remind you about a video that it is time to watch. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for the cross-eyed bear that you gave to me. I know that's not the real lyrics. You guys are all the greatest. I will see you next time.